Payne and Graham are some of the most dangerous loose cannons in the history of the world. This stupid plan poses the risk of direct confrontation between the proposed coalition force of 100,000 and Russia and Iraq, which are both militarily assisting the Assad government and may not stay out of the fight. Something which these two psychotic sisters, McCain and Lindsey Graham, have not thought about in their insane plan. That's some news that I saved for the third hour. This is what this lunatic in the White House has permitted to arise, with the help, by the way, of two stupid Republicans, if you want to call them that. McCain has always been a lunatic, a madman. A madman who was either crazier before he went to Vietnam and then became crazy after the torture of five years. In either case, a Manchurian candidate stooge for the military-industrial complex, in my estimation. McCain is a, a lunatic, a madman, a warmonger. This is the same McCain who went to Ukraine and started up the Ukrainian people and started a civil war. This is the same madman who, with his foaming mouth, went to Cairo and tried to topple a, leg a legitimate government and get back the Muslim Brotherhood. I want you to understand what I just said to you. McCain is a certifiable madman, a warmonger, a stooge of the New World Order, a neocon who represents the military-industrial complex who is just itching for another war so they can uh, fill their coffers with more blood and more money. This is McCain and Lindsey Graham, another crazy man. They want this war? And here in America, kill Trump from the ACLU? And where is the, the leader of all of this? Where is the leader of all of this madness? Huh. So I say, well, what would you do if you had the microphone? I don't know what you would do. Here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to make sense out of the world. I want you to think about this. All the news that I could be talking about, all the stories that I could be d d dispersing on this radio show. Look at this. I, I read one news story. 100,000 foreign troops, including Americans, to be deployed in Iraq. And I show you how it risks World War III. And in the last hour, I played a soundbite, only a single, two soundbites from a single man, the leader of the Yazidi people from the Human Rights Organization, who are talking about enslavement and rapes of young girls, which is being ignored completely by the, the men without a conscience, the men without a soul, the women without a conscience, the women without a soul in the, in the media business. So before I take my first break, I don't want to lose it. And it's going to take some work on your part. It's only a few seconds. Listen to what's actually going on while the crazy mad surgeon in the White House con continues to botch one operation after another. Listen to clips three and four. Thousands of young yes, the women, girls, and even children who, as I speak, have been enslaved and forced into sexual slavery. These girls are subjected to daily multiple rapes by ISIS monsters. According to many escaped women and girls whom I talked to in northern Iraq, the abducted ESD, mostly women and children, number over 7,000. Some of those women and girls have had to watch seven, eight, and nine-year-old children bleed to death before their eyes after being raped by ISIS militia multiple times a day. I met mothers whose children were torn from them by ISIS. These same mothers came to plead for the return of their children, only to be informed that day the mothers had been fed the flesh of their own children by ISIS. Children murdered, then fed to their own mothers. Children murdered and then fed to their own mothers by the Islamic State. I'm looking on the Fox News website. There's no mention of this story. I'm looking on every website in the United States of America. There's no mention of this story. Nobody cares about what's going on in the Middle East. Victims of rapist cop were forced into sex through fear, says a troublemaker in New York City. That's in the New York Post, but uh, I don't see this story. Freezing weather may have killed Kristen Cavallari's brother. I don't even know who she is. This is a woman, uh, Kristen Cavallari had a brother. I don't know who she is. She was on a soap opera in 2005. This is what Murdoch Jr. puts on the front page. Elizabeth Olsen dumped me the day my best friend died. Did Mets let the aggressive Cubs claw past them in NL? Kylie Jenner and her plump pout. Uh, it's unbelievable, and you wonder why America has no brains. 
Trump website goes down after anonymous threat. Uh, Fuhrer grows at Citadel over photos of cadets in KKK-style hoods. Which stories are more important? Pesticide and milk may cause Parkinson's disease or the rape of seven-year-old girls. And here's the part that, that grates me the most. Hillary Clinton represents women. She represents women against men, women against evil Republican men. And that lying Hillary Clinton says nothing about actual rape, actual kidnapping, actual slavery of girls, nor do any of the American feminists. I rest my case. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. It's the fact that hatred, anger, rage, righteous indignation definitely uh, provoke people more than love, <laughs> hope, and humor. <laughs> it's a given. I mean, people think that when you talk about love, hope, and humor, you're getting soft. But I'm doing it for the opposite reason. I think that many people in America who could be warriors for the truth, who could expose the charlatan and get him out of office before his term is up through impeachment, through a medical board that examines his sanity. I've said that before. I, I think that a, a board of nine Psychiatrists could examine whether the president is sane. Because by his statements, he's insane. You know, many people can't listen to talk radio anymore because although they know that we are truth sayers, they're frightened. They know the government is filled with lying, deceitful. Uh, we, we don't even have words for this government of ours. Many of you have words, but we're not going to use them here because then I'll go into the hate that I'm trying to avoid, the rage, the anger, the righteous indignation. I, I've got to stay away from it. It makes you too brittle. It doesn't leave you flexible enough to fight them. And what's coming over the next year that's left of this monster is unimaginable. You think you've seen it all, you're mistaken, because I know what they do in the last three months. It's the, the sin qua non of everything that they've done before that, magnified by three. What Bush did to us in the last three months of his reign was unimaginable. I was the only one in radio who saw it coming. I called him a, what did I call him, a socialist or something like, a fiscal socialist. It was August of the last year of Bush's reign. I had always been a little queasy about him. I never liked him. I thought he was a double talker. I thought he was part of the deceitful establishment. It was proven when all the talk show hosts who were conservative were invited to lunch with him except me. That was okay. I accepted that. I'm used to it as an independent, not Republican. I, I, I accepted that. didn't matter. Now, what happened was, as I said, he's a fiscal socialist lookout, and he busted the economy out in the last three months, as you well know, and gave us Obama as a result. And they created Obama. Make no mistake about it. The Republicans wanted Obama. They carried the football of the seat for eight straight years, and they knew they couldn't carry it for another four, so they gave you Obama for another eight figuring they'll play the game back and forth, the two-card Monty. See? So now we've had a Democrat for eight years. It's time for Republican. And they're shocked that it may be an independent nationalist like Trump. And they're doing everything they can to shaft the American people. But I want to talk about what I talked about. And so I stand again. I'll go back to what I said to you before. I want to go in another direction. You can inspire in other ways. You can inspire through love, hope, and humor. Uh, you say, Mike, you know, that's all well and good, but we're facing a Muslim enemy. And I know the rest of the story. I can give you the whole, the whole paragraph, the chapter, and the verse. I've written about it. I've talked about it. Almost everything that Donald Trump says I agree with because it's all in my last two books. I'm not accusing him of plagiarism. Don't get me wrong. Trust me. If this is what you do in your spare time is write books instead of giving speeches, and then you hear the words that you say being spoken by others, what can you say? You say, thank God for the printed and spoken word. I posted a, a message on my Facebook page, given that I'm being censored on Facebook, uh, where I said today's radio program will be very special and very different. I, will, I hope you will find it inspirational. And I intend to go down that road for a bit. And 4,443 people were reached since I posted it. I showed an article where the ACLU threatens to kill 
and tells people to kill Trump supporters. And Zuckerberg has not taken down that post. 9,000 people reached. That kind of tells you everything. And it puts what I'm about to say in a new context. And here's what I wrote. I just read it straight out. My voice and my ability to move crowds is my gift, but also my burden. This power of the magical voice, which I first discovered in the first grade, in a slum school in the Bronx, can change people's fates. It's a great gift and a great burden. How would you use this power if you were me as a broadcaster and best-selling author from this day forward? I intend to make this day forward the first day of the rest of my life, as was said in the hippie 70s and 60s. We can change our lives. You say, well, what's wrong with your life, Michael? Well, it's not that there's anything wrong with my life, but it's not what I want it to be. I don't feel that I'm inspiring people in the way I want to inspire them. You see, you can inspire through hate, as ISIS does, as the ACLU does, even as Hillary and Obama do in their own quasi-moderate ways. They inspire through hate. You can inspire through anger. You can inspire through rage. You can inspire through false righteous indignation. We, we know that operates. We get it every day of the week, mainly on talk radio. In varieties, that's what you get. Anger, rage, false righteous indignation. And it riles you up and you listen. That's an inspiration. But then there's the bigger inspirations. You can inspire through love, hope, humor, the positives. I know it sounds hippy-dippy, 60s. I look at the history of the world. And I look at the world today, and I realize that if we don't inspire each other through positive attributes, love, hope, and humor, we're going to descend into the barbarism of the left and the barbarism of ISIS. Now, maybe this is a different turn for Michael Savage. I get it. You like me to be hard. You like me to be tough. You like me to give you the breaking news. You like me to be cynical. You like me to be analytical. You like me to give you stuff that you don't hear anywhere else. I get that. But there's a limit to that. There's a limit to, the, to that. Believe it or not, that's all limited. There's a lot of area beyond all of that. That's called space-time in the universe, and I want to go there. I want to go there in this life with you, and I want to inspire you in the most positive manner. So I'm asking you a simple question. If you were me, if you had the power that I have, for as long as I still may have it, and God only knows how long I'll have this power, as a broadcaster, as a best-selling author, how would you inspire people on this program? What would you do if you had the microphone to inspire people? I think about this season that we're in, the season of peace and the season of love. I think of Christmas. Christianity is the religion of peace. Christianity is the true religion of peace. Islam is not a religion of peace. Christianity is the religion of peace. Christianity is the religion of peace. The religion of peace. Turn the other cheek. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. These are messages that come from Christianity. What can you do? What can you do in an age of deceit and lies and terror? What you can do is reaffirm your own religion. Instead of letting your church become a mosque or a, a, a Unitarian uh, a meeting place, or a drunk tank on uh, Tuesday nights, you can go to church again. However hokey that sounds, however cynical you are, however hard you are, however unneeding you think you really are, you know in your heart that there's something missing in you. You know that you crave something greater. Because the human being is not a dog. The human being is not a bear. The human being is not a fly. The human being is not an eagle. We are unique creatures. And we need something different than the bear, the dog, the snake, and the eagle. What is that thing that we need? It's that thing called God. These creatures, they don't know God. They are of God. They were created by God. But they don't really need God. That's why they're lower animals. We, as higher animals, need higher things than just food.